Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. This is the first of what we hope to be a monthly program dealing with Sheboygan County Government, the departments that we have, the issues that we are dealing with, and some of the people that are uh, providing these services that uh, you are paying for Sheboygan County taxpayers. Uh, tonight, we would just like to give a, a short overview of Sheboygan County Government and uh, county government in general and some of the departments that we uh, have in Sheboygan County. For your information, uh, I am Chairman Dan Lemihu. I've just been recently elected as Chairman of the Sheboygan County Board and I have served Sheboygan County for 12 years as Sheboygan County Supervisor. I live in the village of Oostburg, represent that, that district and have served on both personnel and finance committees as member and also as chairman. And in April, the board elected me as chairman. Um, I'm self-employed. I, uh, I am not retired, so I can't give full time to this job as county board chairman and county board supervisor. Uh, but uh, as my work permits, being self-employed, uh, I am giving this, this service to the county as chairman. Along with me tonight is our administrative coordinator, Adam Payne, who has been with the county for a little over a year. And uh, Adam, would you introduce yourself to the uh, viewers too? Uh, certainly. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you see this program. It's a pleasure to be here today with Chairman Lemieux. And um, again, my name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator. I started my responsibilities in January of 1999, so I have about a year and a half uh, of, of uh, experience working here now and very pleased to be to the community. We've uh, returned here from um, our, our roots essentially. My parents, my grandparents were born in this area and uh, it's just good to be back to Sheboygan County and working for the county board. With that, Dan, would you be, uh, would you be able to, to start on giving an overview of Sheboygan County government? Sure, Adam. Um... Most of what I'm going to say uh, throughout this program you're probably familiar with, but, but as we uh, discuss this back and forth, hopefully the viewers will, will get an idea too of, of um, what county government is all about. Most people are, are a little bit more familiar with their municipality, their village, or the city, their school boards, but are not as involved with county government. So, so during this show, we'd just like to give a little overview of, of county government. Sheboygan County is one of 72 counties in the state of Wisconsin. We're the 12th largest county in the state of Wisconsin. And county government, uh, by its nature, is, is the authority is given through the state, the state statutes, uh, more specifically uh, chapter 59 of the, the Wisconsin statutes, gives the county government the, the authority to uh, levy taxes, enact laws, develop programs, and appropriate funds. So on our own, we, we do not have a lot of authority, but through the state government, we have been given that authority. And um, through that, we collect the taxes, appropriate funds, and develop our programs. Uh, most of the programs that, that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are mandated by state government. <clears throat> and so we act as a extension of state government to provide the programs that they have set up. Organizationally, county government is set up similar to federal and state government. We have uh, three uh, different areas. We have the legislative, which would be the county board, the 34 supervisors of the county board. We have the executive branch would be uh, yourself as administrative coordinator. And we have the judicial. We have the uh, five courts that we have set up in the courthouse uh, dealing with uh, judicial issues that we um, uh, come through the courts. So um, the authority that the, that the different departments have, for example, the executive, is a little different than it is at state or federal level, but we still do have the executive, legislative, and judicial areas. You think it'd be helpful to give an overview of how county government or the county board works itself? Sure. We have. On the county board, we have 34 county board supervisors uh, representing the 34 different districts of uh, Sheboygan County. These districts are set up 
hopefully evenly by population. Presently, with the 1990 census, the districts were set up to have uh, a little over 3,000 residents in each district. So as the districts are set up, we try to uh, balance each district so that they have as close to, I, I believe the number is 3,055 residents per district, and try to set up our districts as closely to that as possible. Um, as the census is being taken this year, and in early 2001, uh, we get the, uh, the new census numbers, uh, we will have to do some redistricting, and we will um, set up these 34 districts or however many districts we have. That's the one opportunity we have as a county board to change the size of uh, our county board every 10 years after the census. And depending on the, where the population shifts are, we would set up our districts accordingly. Presently, there are 16 supervisors representing districts in the city of Sheboygan and 18 supervisors representing districts outside of the city of Sheboygan. If the population would shift uh, dramatically in any of these areas, we would have to um, increase the number of supervisors in the, uh, outside of the city of Sheboygan or decrease in the city depending on the population. We won't know that until the census is finished, and that's why it's important to get these numbers in and, and get accurate numbers so that we have um, proper representation on the county board and on other boards. The preliminary figures show that the population in Sheboygan County has increased from approximately 103,000 to 112 to 113,000. So the numbers of people that we represent will increase um, by each district. After each election, uh, the way we set up the county board is the first meeting, county board meeting after the election, we elect a chairman, vice chairman, and executive committee. And this, these positions are elected by the other county board supervisors. And after that meeting, where the chairman, vice chairman, and executive committee are, are elected, the chairman and the executive committee make recommendations for the other committee assignments for the other 10 standing committees. And at that time, the recommendation comes from the executive committee and the full board will vote on those committee assignments. Uh, I think it would be helpful to the, to the listeners to just have an idea of, of what the, the committees are on, on the county board. Um, <clears throat> other than the executive committee, the standing committees are the Agriculture Committee, Emerg Emergency Management Committee, the Finance Committee, and, and reporting to the Finance Committee would be the Finance Department, the County Clerk, the County Treasurer, and Information Systems Departments, the Healthcare Centers Committee, uh, <clears throat> which the three healthcare centers that we presently have uh, report to that committee, Health and Human Services Board, the only committee that we have that has more than five members. We have uh, nine members on that, that board. Six of them are county board supervisors and three are non-supervisors. Um, under the Health and Human Services Board, there are several divisions, Division on Aging, Community Programs, Social Services, and Public Health, and the Veterans Department. So the Health and Human Services Board is a very active board. Highway is another committee, Land Conservation, Law Committee, uh, normally, when you think of law committee, you think of the sheriff's department. Uh, the sheriff's department reports to the law committee, the clerk of courts, child support enforcement agency, the district attorney's office, the coroner, family court commissioner, game wardens, and register and probate. Again, a very active committee, the law committee. Personnel committee, uh, under which the uh, county printing department and corporation council report uh, to that committee, the property committee, and the resources committee, uh, which covers the departments of uh, planning, the marsh park, the conservation clubs, and the airport operations. So you can see that there's a, a large committee structure. There are, are, other than the executive committee, we have the other standing committees. And we uh, appoint those committees. And for the next two years, uh, those committees give oversight to these different departments that report to them. So you have 12 standing committees 
and uh, with a broad array of responsibilities overseeing all of these departments. Uh, can you touch on how the county board exercises its powers? Uh, basically, the again, through uh, Chapter 59 of the Wisconsin Statutes, the county board is allowed to pass ordinances and resolutions. How our process works is a county board supervisor or, or a committee can bring a resolution or an ordinance to the county board. Uh, normally, they come to the committee structure, and a committee will bring a resolution or an ordinance. And it will be presented to the board at our monthly meeting. A county board meets once a month. And at that point, it will be referred to a different committee. Uh, if the uh, personnel committee brings in a contract for approval, that would get referred to, if it's a contract for the sheriff's department, it would get referred to the law committee. Um, there will always be a committee, committee or committees that, that a resolution or ordinance will be referred to. Um, after that, that committee will hold a meeting, a public meeting, uh, where there can be a public input on that resolution or an ordinance, and that the departments can uh, come in and, and defend and promote that resolution or an ordinance. Uh, during that, that open meeting, the, the public can, can give their input. Uh, it will be debated. It can be amended. That committee can recommend amendments to it. And then the following month at the full county board, uh, with their recommendation, that document will be either passed or, or denied or amended. So the process takes um, several months. You, you need the time to develop the, the resolution and ordinance. You need to uh, bring it to the committee or to the board, it needs to be referred and then come back the following month. So there, there is some time uh, for public input, for a debate on that issue. Uh, the difference between an ordinance and a resolution, probably the easiest way to put it would be an ordinance would be our way of passing a law, legislation, uh, something that is going to be put on the books and, and it's enforceable. We can, if, if it's something that the public has to abide by, at the point that we pass it, it's enforceable. A resolution is more of a, an opinion uh, in the form of a resolution, uh, something that, that we feel is important enough that as a county board we should take a stand on it and, and, and make a statement on it and we pass that in the form of a resolution. Uh, and so it's more of an opinion in, 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 in formal form. It sounds like there's a real strong committee system in place here. Now you've touched on the, um, the origins of county government and being an agent of the state, the broad authority, the, the uh, statutory authority being from Chapter 59, uh, 34 county board, member board, 11, 12 standing committees with the executive committee, ordinances versus resolutions. Uh, maybe you should take just a few minutes to just summarize your roles and responsibilities as the new county board chairman. Before I do that, Adam, mm -hmm. there's just one thing that, that I, thinking back to the committee structure and how the committees work and bring these resolutions and ordinances through. I said the, the county board meets once a month, and many of our viewers think, boy, that's a, that's a gravy job. They meet once a month, they get this huge paycheck every <laughs> month, and all they have to do is come to that one meeting a month. Uh, the way. County boards are set up differently throughout the state. Uh, some boards, when they have their county board meeting, it lasts all day. They go through uh, payroll vouchers. They go through everything as a full board. Our board is set up where the committees do the bulk of the work. And not as much time is spent at the full county board meeting. The 11 standing committees that we have, plus the executive committee, there are, with the 34 supervisors, with five members on each committee, with the nine on the um, Human Services Board, approximately half of the supervisors have one committee assignment, and the other half have two committee assignments. These committees might meet every week. The Finance Committee meets once a week, every week. And the Law Committee meets three out of four weeks of the month. The Health and Human Services Board meets three out of four weeks of the month. Uh, plus, there are various other meetings that, that they need to attend. So a county board supervisor 
uh, is not just spending uh, one night a month uh, doing his work as a county board supervisor. The, in fact, I, I looked it up. The last year that we have uh, final information for, for uh, the number of meetings that supervisors attended, there were the supervisor that attended the fewest meetings and through the course of a 12-month period attended 54 meetings. The highest was 184 meetings. A supervisor in, in a 12-month period attended 184 meetings. The average for the, for the 34 supervisors was 110 meetings a year. So you can see that there's, there's a lot more work than 12 county board meetings a year. So the time spent is, is much greater than, than what appears uh, when, when just the county board meets and, and uh, we get coverage of our, of our monthly meeting and it lasts an hour, hour and a half, and, and people think, boy, they, they don't spend a lot of time in county government. But, but the time is spent at the meetings, uh, uh, which are public meetings. The, the public's invited to attend, give their input, um, listen to the decisions that are being made, the debates that are taking place. So um, just, just so the viewers are aware that, that even though uh, the, the, the full county board is limited in the number of times it meets, the committees, um, especially during budget time or uh, depending on, on, the, on the committee and, and the work involved, uh, spend much more time at their jobs than just at one meeting. And then you asked me about what my, my role as county chairman is. Actually, I'm learning that right now. I've, I've been chairman now for one month, and after serving 12 years on the board, uh, serving on committees, being committee chairman, my involvement with the board has been working on issues, working uh, with a committee, working with different departments. Uh, when I was on personnel committee, I was, was active in negotiating contracts, dealing with grievances. Your time is very structured because you have to deal with these issues every month. As county board chairman, I'm not a member of any of the standing committees. As a voting member, I'm ex-official member of all the committees. I see my role um, as chairman as being um, support to all the committees, finding out what the issues are that they are dealing with and and supporting them if, if, if that is my position, if, if I would disagree with an issue, explaining why I would disagree or how I, I think an, uh, an issue or a resolution should be changed. But working with the departments and the committees to, to get their legislation passed, to deal with the issues that come before them, act as a liaison between the different committees. If there are, if there are problems between committees, to deal with them and, and, and make sure that the committees are working together, that the departments are working together. Uh, that's not just the role of the chairman, but I think it's the role of the executive committee to be proactive in making sure that the, the different committees are working together, the different departments are working together. We all serve the, the residents of Sheboygan County, and we don't need to be um, not cooperating with each other when, when we're all, we all have the same purpose, to, to serve the residents of Sheboygan County. So I guess I see my role more as, as um, not a mediator, but, but somebody that, that brings it all together and makes sure that the different departments and committees are working together. But again, I've, I've, I've been doing this for one month, and, uh, uh, and I'm learning a lot, and there's a lot of demands in my time initially as, as chairman. The first two weeks, I thought the only reason I was chairman is to sign things. Because every time I came to the office, there was a stack of papers to be signed. And uh, I thought the only reason you needed a chairman in Sheboygan County was to sign documents. But I'm finding out that, that there's probably a lot more involved than just signing documents. But I think you know, that's about all that I would have to say about the, uh, the legislative end of it. But I think our, our listeners need to hear more about the the, the departments we have, the, the legislative or the executive end of it, and the 1,400 or so employees that we have, and, and, and from your end of it, you know, what are you doing for sure. Sheboygan County? Sure. Uh, before I touch on the three administrative areas that are outlined in the statutes, I, I wanted to um, 
touch on again in terms of my experience. I was rather brief at the beginning, and, and it's been a pleasure working here the last year and a half. You touched on all the roles and responsibilities of the county board supervisors and emphasized the time commitment. And it is an incredible time commitment, and it takes a lot of people who are very conscientious to fulfill those responsibilities. Prior to you hiring me for this position, you and the executive committee a year and a half ago, I worked for the Wisconsin Land and Water Conservation Association. I worked for 72 county boards across the state, and I got a pretty good feel for how different boards operate and their roles and responsibilities and the leadership that is presented at some, in some counties versus others. And all I can say is that it's been a pleasure working with our county board because they are very conscientious, they're very dedicated, and having started under the uh, wing of Chairman Gilligan, uh, Jim Gilligan, as most people know in this community, has been on the county board for 37 years. And to take a rookie such as myself under his wing and to be able to benefit from those 37 years of experience on the county board was very helpful my first year and a half here. But with that said, I'm look looking forward to going on and obviously looking forward to working with you. Administratively, there's essentially three areas or three administrative arrangements in the statutes. First, the, there's the executive level. And statewide, as you said, there are 72 counties. Nine of those counties have a county executive, which is an elected position, and they have very clear statutory authority. Uh, they appoint the different department heads, they appoint the committee members, they present, develop, and present the budget. They can veto the county board if the county board makes a decision. They can veto that decision, although the county board they can, then can come back and override that on a two-thirds vote. There aren't any minimum qualifications to be an elected official, and they answer to the, and they answer to the people. They have four-year terms. So again, there are nine county execs statewide. Administrators is the other level of uh, administration in, in county government. 10 of the 72 counties have an administrator. They also have very clear statutory authority. They, they're appointed by the board, however, not elected by the public. Uh, the board, therefore, can, prov can have some very rigid professional requirements and uh, most administrators or administrative coordinators are people at that level throughout the state. It's not unusual to have a master's degree and have a great deal of experience in management. Uh, they also prepare the budget presented to the county board. They appoint supervisors and they appoint department heads to respective committees, but that has to be then confirmed by the county board. And finally, if they're not doing a sufficient job, the county board can eliminate the, that position, unlike an executive that, again, answers to the people. The administrative coordinator, my position, 53, the remaining 53 counties, are required by law to have an administrative coordinator. However, not all of them have hired a uh, staff professional to carry out that role. Sometimes the county board chairman or chairperson would take on the role of administrative coordinator. It could be designated to the county clerk. Um, the roles and responsibilities between the administrator and the administrative coordinator are relatively similar. However, the key difference is the statutes are very clear in, on the roles and responsibilities of an executive or an administrator. An administrative coordinator, those responsibilities are granted by the county board. Uh, so uh, similar responsibilities would again be um, um, development of the budget, uh, supervision of department heads, again, very similar to the administrator, but the key difference is that is authorized and granted by the county board. So there can be a real variation amongst those 53 counties. There are 23 departments in Sheboygan County, and you touched on the 12 standing committees and the oversight responsibilities of those departments. In terms of the administration, again, in Sheboygan County, we have an administrative coordinator form of administration. We uh, work with 23 different departments to implement the decisions of the county board. Department heads do not make policy, they implement policy, and it's our job to carry out your decisions and the county board's decisions to the best of our ability. Just very quickly for our viewers, those 23 departments, 16 of them are appointed. We have an airport, building services, child support, corp council, family court commissioner, finance, health care centers, health and human services, highway, information systems, land and water conservation, personnel, planning and resources, printing, extension, and veteran services. 
a great deal of uh, responsibility throughout the county that most people may not be aware of. We also have seven elected officials, county clerk, clerk of courts, coroner, sheriff, district attorney, register of deeds, and the treasurer. And again, those elected officials answer to the people who put them in those positions. Adam, <clears throat> I think I talked too long today. We're almost running out of time. Could you, in just a minute or so, uh, just summarize what your, you feel your roles and responsibilities are? I'm the Chief Administrative Officer in Sheboygan County. My roles and responsibilities include supervision of all the non-elected department heads, but I share that supervision with each of the 12 standing committees. Um, my responsibilities are somewhat similar to yours, working with your supervisors, but I'm working with your employees to coordinate the overall management and administration of all 23 departments. Uh, to certainly be your point person for the budget development and make sure we're establishing targets and goals and that we have a very f uh, functional process to go forward. Um, personnel issues, uh, recommending, recommending uh, policy, programs, uh, new, initi new initiatives in the county, but I emphasize recommending. Uh, the final decision is the county board. So, a uh, great deal of responsibility, a great deal of challenge, and the key, I would say, in terms of my position is I see myself as being a catalyst to provide leadership and to be a catalyst for continuous improvement. As you know, uh, we've raised the standards in Sheboygan County, and we have very high expectations of ourselves and of the people we work with. And, and uh, I find the department heads as a whole a great pleasure to work with. They're very good, hardworking people, and we have raised expectations. We seek continuous improvement, and I'm in a position now where I can help the county board make sure we hold people accountable. So I would say in a nutshell, those are some of my roles and responsibilities. Very good. As we wrap up this half-hour show, uh, I realize that this is our first time at it, and we had way too much material that we were trying to present tonight. We, we, we have not... Um, gotten over some of the, the issues we want to talk about. Uh, I think for our viewers, we would just like to, to welcome you back next month. We hope to do this every month. Uh, as we, we get away from a general overview, uh, we would like to bring some specific department heads and issues to you in this program. Uh, next month, we would like to discuss our uh, health care centers. We would like to bring Gene Larrabee, our, our, our head of our health care centers, uh, along with us to this program. And we would hope to uh, give an overview of, uh, of the uh, plan that we have in place to downsize our healthcare facilities, to, to build a new facility at Rocky Knoll. And uh, we'd be uh, willing to uh, give all this information and hopefully we can get it into this half hour format and that um, as we continue with this program, Sheboygan County, uh, working for you, working for the taxpayers of Sheboygan County, we can bring the issues to you that you want to hear about uh, please contact us and let us know uh, what issues you would like us to bring to this program. Um, even give us a suggestion for a name. We don't have a good name for this program yet. We haven't given a lot of thought to this. So if you have any suggestions for a name, uh, we're going to stick with Sheboygan County working for you until we get a better idea or a better suggestion. Uh, but uh, thanks for viewing, uh, watching this show. Thanks for uh, your comments as you give them to us in the coming month. And we hope to see you again next month. Thank you.